Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, English with Michael. Thank you for being here. I've got some things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about having online English lessons. This is something that I have a fair amount of experience with. You know, I've been teaching online for six years and I've had many lessons as a student as well in other languages. So today I want to share my advice for preparing for an online lesson and how to get the most out of it. So how can you really, really get your money's worth in your online lesson? And I know there are many of you who you don't want to have online lessons and that's fine. I have spoken a lot before about online lessons and language partners. I really think everyone should have one of these if possible. It's a really good way to practice, especially during this pandemic, right? I think what I'm saying today can apply to a language partner conversation as well. So I hope it's useful advice. My big tip that I want to kind of give for everyone beforehand is when you have an English lesson coming up, I recommend studying for about 30 minutes beforehand at least, especially if your mind and your daily life is always in your native language. It's a really good idea to kind of change the way you're thinking and get your mouth used to speaking English because it can take some time to switch over. What I've had in the past is really difficult when you're using your native language all day, and then instantly, suddenly, you have to change to your target language. And it's very difficult. It takes a long time to get into it. So if you want to get the most out of your lesson, I suggest reviewing some vocabulary, doing some speaking, some listening, all that kind of stuff before your lesson, directly before your lesson. So I'm going to give you four more pieces of advice of what you can do before your lesson, and then I'm going to talk about what you can do during your lesson, some activities and ideas, things like that. One thing that I like to do is prepare some sentences I'd like to say. So not a whole speech, nothing like that, just some basic phrases or grammar structures. So for example, at the start of a lesson, I might write on a document, played in snow, you know, had a lot of fun, or maybe had a blast, a more like idi idiomatic expression there. <laughs> I had a blast. And then I might write, strolled around the neighborhood. So it's just some things I want to think about, I want to talk about with my, with my teacher. And it's also got some expressions that I want to practice as well. So during my lesson, I will see that, I will see those expressions and I will say, oh, on the weekend, I played in the snow, I had a blast, and then I strolled around the neighborhood. And it's kind of adding to our conversation, giving us some structure. I really like to do that. You know, I don't like to read word for word what I put, just some ideas to get me thinking and encourage me to use my new vocabulary. Another thing that I recommend for some people is even to make a list of all the new words you've been learning recently and perhaps grammar as well. So this is something that I have done before where I had a Google sheet of all of the new words that I learned, and I also shared this with my teacher. So every lesson, my teacher would help me kind of have some conversation surrounding these new words, making some questions out of it and things like that. I think it can be a very useful thing to do because it's forcing you to practice these new words. One thing that I have done since the very beginning of my language learning days is to make a cheat sheet, a cheat sheet. So, this is basically where I have a page of everything I've learned recently, some expressions to fall back on if I forget. So one phrase is kind of like, I'm sorry, but I have to leave five minutes early today. Or one of them is, I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? You know, these kind of phrases that you need in every conversation, but in the heat of the moment when you're on the spot, it's easy to forget, right? So I think it's really good if you can have these at hand, ready, to kind of review when you need them. So what I do is I will have my Skype or video software open on one half of the screen, my cheat sheet open on the other half. So if I need it, I know it's there. I know I can use it. And I'm actually gonna show you my personal cheat sheet now. 
So it's a little bit personal. I hope, hope I can share it with you. But on the left here, you can see all of the expressions in Japanese that I've been learning, that I want to practice with my tutor. Some of them are quite easy and it's just in case I forget or I panic in the moment. And some of them are just new ones, new phrases, new grammar rules that I want to kind of force myself to use in conversation. Of course, my tutor will help me with these as well. So it's not like I'm afraid that they won't help me, but I think it's nice if I can use this and remember it myself. And I don't always have to say, uh, how do you say this? How do you say this? Another thing that I do like to do just in case to speed things up is to keep one tab open of Google Translate. So of course the tutor can often do this. Your teacher can help you with translating and giving you the correct word in English. But I think it can be helpful to have a tab open. So when there's something you don't know and you can very quickly search for it and help your sentence without, again, without breaking that flow of what you're saying. Okay, so now I want to give some ideas of what you could do in a lesson. So a good teacher will always have some kind of idea, even if you don't prepare anything, even if you come up to the lesson with no preparation, a good teacher will be able to lead the way and kind of make a good activity suitable for you. However, I do think it's also a good idea if you wanted to prepare something and you know, the teacher will always be happy because that means, to be honest, that means less work for them. <laughs> so it's a good thing when you can prepare something as well. One idea is to describe some pictures, you know, maybe a picture of your hometown or even some pictures on your phone that you took during the week. So send this to your teacher and try to describe them or maybe even describe them before you send them. So that way your teacher only has the knowledge of what you're telling them. So it's a really good way to describe it and then send the photo afterwards. Next one is very simple, simply describing your week. So talking about what you did in the week and your plans ahead. It's quite a simple one, but it's nice to use past simple tense, future tenses and present perfect tense. So it's a good, a good chance to practice your use of tenses. And it's also relevant to your life. You know, you're not talking about global warming or politics, but something that you need to think and talk about every day. Of course, you can just pick a topic as well and talk about that. That's what I do with many of my students is we'll just pick a topic, whether that is the environment, that is travel, culture, and we'll just discuss that together and talk about it. So that's another option, of course, for what you can do in your lesson. You know, why not think about something else you like? Like you could describe a great meal you had. Think about something very specific like this or describe your favorite car, depending on what your hobbies are, you know? but you can think so many good vocabulary, so much good vocabulary for food and meals. Like it was sticky and crunchy and soft. So these are fairly basic words, but you can make it much harder if you want to, right? The final one, which is one that I have not tried yet as a student, but I have tried as a teacher, is using Google Maps. So if you checked in with one of my previous videos, I think it was the last one perhaps, I was using Google Maps to talk about directions. You could do the same in your lessons as well. So share your screen, open up Google Maps, and you can take your teacher on a tour of your hometown or your favorite place. I think this is a really cool thing to do because it's kind of like you're going for a walk with them. You're saying, oh, over here is this thing. If you look to your right, you can see my favorite cafe and oh, what a beautiful day. It's very sunny today, right? So I think it's such a great activity because it can really be a great opportunity to practice so many phrases and words. And if you still have some time left at the end, maybe you could swap positions. So if your teacher agrees, they could show you their hometown. It might be interesting for you to see what life is like in their country, and they can give you a tour as well. But again, the focus is probably best on you asking questions. So you can say, oh, I can see that building over there. What is that building for? Or what is the name of this thing? Um, you know, make really kind of useful and slightly more complex sentences, perhaps. 
So that's my advice, a few simple tips and activities you could try. If you do any of them, let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your experience. But yeah, I'm gonna be trying more of these myself throughout the year. So good luck to all of us. Thank you for watching and good luck with your English studies. I'll see you next time.